Hey guys, Lady Liberty Stacker. It is Saturday, March the 12th, 2022. And I got a comment today on one of my videos that I had posted a while back. And the person, um, you know, I think it was one of the videos on how to identify unmarked cast iron. I probably made that two or three years ago or even longer. I still get comments and people watch them and they're very uh, helpful for those trying to learn vintage cast iron. Anyway, what you're looking at here, just to give you an example, one is a marked Wagner Ware Sydney O, and the other one is an unmarked Wagner Ware Sydney O, and Sydney O. And the reason why they're called Sydney O is they were made in Sydney, Ohio. And I'm actually holding the camera right now, but I'm going to put this down eventually so I can show you the differences between the two. Um, if you're ever out there on the wild and you don't know that much about vintage cast iron, uh, this person had a great question. So there are telltale signs. You can always tell if it's a Wagner by looking at it by certain features in the design. So we're going to look at a, a marked one, and I'm going to show it to you. This is, see if we can get, oh, let me see if I can turn on the other light here. Oops. Light is on. Okay. It just seems kind of dark in the kitchen sometimes. Anyway, here's a Wagner Ware Sydney O. And this is a model 1053G or S. I think it's an S. Okay. And this is a number three. And it has well developed pore spouts, not as well developed as Griswold or Volrath or some of those. But you can do they, you can definitely tell the pore spout. There's a tear shaped handle. It has a really uh, on the marked or on the marked one. The tear shape is really nice. I'm gonna and the uh, surface here is smooth. Now they did come out with a couple of different surfaces for people back in the day when they were purchasing them brand new. They had a smooth surface. I think a shiny surface, and the other one was a milled circular surface. Some people think that people took a, a, a grinding wheel to it or a wire wheel to it. No, no, that was a, a fine. Uh, that was a uh, one of the finishes that they do used to offer. So if you ever find one like that, they're more rare. You don't see them as often, but they have a really cool effect where you can actually rec see a, a symmetrical pattern on the finish they're gorgeous anyway but this is a number three Wagner and now if we look at the side walls you can see that there is a uh, like a border all the way around on the marked one and then on the the uh, back of course you see the number the model number and the logo and then most uh, interesting here, you have, of course, the teardrop on the other side. And then it has a slight ridge. Sometimes they're more defined than that. And then there's like a triangular section here that meets the side wall. And this is the marked one. Now we're going to come over here and take a look at the unmarked Wagner. We'll start from the uh, surface. Again, it's a smooth surface. It has utility marks, utensil marks on it. But it has the well-developed pore spouts. Now, the, the tear shape isn't quite as definitive as the uh, marked one, but it's still a tear, teardrop handle and a number three on the top of the handle. And again, the surface is smooth. We're going to flip it over. And or before we flip it over, we're going to look at the side walls. And you see the border around the edges of the side walls, the very same as on the marked. And then on the back, there's no logo. I'll hold it up so you can see better. No logo. The only thing you're really going to see here are fonts, which is about a half, maybe a half an inch. I'd have to measure it, but it'll always say six and a half inch skillet or however many inch skillet there is. It could say 11 and three quarter inch skillet. Now this one uh, was made before 1960. Uh, in, after 1960, they would have made an USA stamp on them. This one doesn't have made an USA stamp. So it was probably in the 1950s, somewhere in there. But this has six and a half inch skillet, so you know just by that it's a number three. And down there, that H is a mold 
maker's mark or the mold mark. It was in the H mold that this was poured. And you're going to see it again on the underside of the handle. There's the H there. So you'll see it on the bottom of the skillet at the 6 o'clock position. And you see it the underside of the handle just above the teardrop and before you see the triangular patch that meets the sidewall. And again, I'm going to have to hold it at an angle. See that triangular patch? You see that? You've got a Wagner for sure. So anyway, that's how you tell the difference between a marked Wagner and that's how you know you have an unmarked Wagner by all those telltale signs. So that I hope that explains it. Uh, in case you guys are wondering, Wagner's probably the most prolific vintage cast iron out there. They made a ton of them. Wagner was around for a long time. Uh, they combined with Griswold in 1957, and then they were kind of one from the company that owned them, General Household. I, I tried to remember the name. I can't remember off the top of my head. Into the 60s, and then they ceased to make skillets after that. But Wagner had the most, and they're not quite as valuable as a collector, that Griswold and Volrath, because there's not as many Griswold and definitely not as many Volrath, and they're sometimes as valuable depending on the model as a Griswold. But anyway, that's here and over there. That's a whole nother video. But um, one thing you go, you do want to pay attention to the larger sizes on Wagner Ware, whether they're marked or unmarked, tend to be warped. I'm not sure why that is, because they seem to be as heavy, if, or if not heavier than, than Griswold, but they tend to be warped and spin. Now these don't. Uh, you can tell, I mean, it has a little bit of movement, but doesn't spin all the way around. That's the unmarked. And we'll go and try it on uh, the marked. That one doesn't have much movement at all. So, but anyway, if you have any questions, please leave them below or leave a comment below. Um, please give me a thumb up if you want to see more uh, videos like this. And in case you're wondering what that is, I'm going to make meatloaf later with a spinner. This one is a real spinner. So Wagner unmarked, believe it's an unmarked, but I'm not sure here. Uh, but it has the Made in USA stamp, and it's got the font. It's very faint, six and a half, or it says, it's hard to say, ten and a half inch uh, skillet. It's number eight, but it's got these on the underside of the handle and no mold maker's mark. So I'm not really entirely sure, but it does look like a Wagner to me because it's got the... Uh, it's got the border around the edges, uh, but this one is a spinner. You can see it spins all the way around. So I'm going to use it to bake in the oven, so I don't have to worry about the fact that it's slightly warped. That's what you use warped ones for. But that, I believe, is a Wagner. It's got the teardrop handle. It just doesn't have the mold maker's mark on it. If anybody else knows, because of the three dots on the underside of the handle, chime in. Anyway, guys, that's all I have for you today on this. Again, leave me a thumb up. Helps my channel. Leave a comment or question below. Thanks for watching, and go make it a great day.